begin with, I'd like to pass my greetings to the moderator, the judges, the timekeeper, the secretary, the invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. I am by the names of Esther Yak here by opposing the motion that says the intensification of modern technology has surpassed the art of ancient creativity. But I would like to begin by the quote that a well-known German physicist and prize winner, Albert Einstein, quoted that, I fear the day when technology overlaps with humanity. The world would only have a generation of idiots. Ladies and gentlemen, we can see that now a simple mathematical problem cannot be calculated without using a calculator. But before modern technology was brought in, people were wise enough to calculate mathematics, to form mathematics without the help of calculators. Ladies and gentlemen, before I go on, I'd like to put more effort in my fellow speaker's struggle. He talked of cultural preservation. We love our culture. The whole world loves culture. And we know that ancient creativity has surpassed modern technology. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, 10 to 15 million people around the world visit the pyramids of Egypt because ancient creativity has surpassed. He talked of human connection. How beautiful does it feel when you participate in traditional dances or wrestling? That connects people in every culture and every society. Ladies and gentlemen, my first point of argument is social isolation. As technology advances, there is a risk of increased social isolation. People may spend excessive time spending it engaging with devices and online platforms, leading to the reduction of face-to-face -face interactions and the decline in social skills. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, modern technology has not connected people, but rather has isolated people from each other, which first has reduced face-to-face -face interactions. Nowadays, people do not visit their families or friends, they just call. But there are some things which cannot be said or understood through the phone. But if it's face-to-face -face interactions, I believe that they can be said and understood. Secondly, it isolates people in a way that some people prefer online relationships than in-person relationships. But in such relationships where people claim to be lovers, there is a lack of physical proximity, nonverbal cues, and genuine human connection. Without all this dear house, there is a sense of loneliness and isolation. Thirdly, there is a decline in social skills because some people are addicted to their electronic gadgets, with, that they cannot spend a day or an hour without checking the views or likes on social media. This spending of excessive time can hinder interpersonal communication, lacking empathy and understanding leading to difficulties, leading to hardships in forming, maintaining and nurturing meaningful relationships online. To be honest, ladies and gentlemen, one can have 5,000 friends in Facebook. One, two, three, 5,000. But ask yourself this, how many of these friends are your real friends? How many do you talk to? How many do you love and trust? How many care about you? This shows that, ladies and gentlemen, to keep the ball rolling, to keep the ball rolling, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to go on to my next point of argument, environmental impact. The production, use, and disposal of technology contributes to environmental issues negatively. The extraction of raw materials, energy consumption, electronic wastes, and the carbon footprint of manufacturing processes can have negative, disastrous, and dangerous consequences to our environment. Modern technology has a negative impact on the environment. First, um, during the resource extraction, during the mining of minerals, there are significant environmental consequences, such as habit destruction, the homes of animals are destroyed, such as water pollution and soil degradation. Secondly, energy consumption. These innovations consume substantial amounts of energy as it contributes to greenhouse gas emissions, which can have detrimental effects on the environment, especially if the energy is derived from non-renewable sources like crude oil and natural gas. Thirdly, electronic waste. These electronics tend to have a shorter product life cycle, and the improper disposal or recycling of such electronics can lead to environmental contamination due to hazardous due to toxic materials like lead, mercury, and cadmium found in these devices. Last but not least, the carbon footprint. The carbon emissions associated with the production and use of technology can exacerbate, can catalyze climatic change, leading to global, not national or social, but global environmental challenges. It would be wrong to live without shedding light on an important aspect on the art of ancient creativity, the legacy and influence. 
Many contemporary artists draw inspiration from ancient art forms, incorporating elements and ideas into their own work. The art of ancient creativity continues to inspire and shape artistic practices today. For example, the Pyramid Continental Building was named and built after the pyramids of Giza in Egypt. In summary, ladies and gentlemen, I talked of social isolation, environmental impact, and the legacy and influence. In conclusion, addressing these concerns requires implementing sustainable practices, promoting responsible consumption and disposal of technology, and finding ways to leverage technology while minimizing its negative impact on both social connections, the environment. Dear how society must find a balance in utilizing technology while mitigating its potential downsides. But how? We can do this by going to our roots. We can do this by the arts of ancient creativity. So dear ladies and gentlemen, the art of ancient creativity has surpassed the intensification of modern technology. I rest my guest.